Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be another kind of longish painting session, but as usual in the description, I'll leave a kind of more of a condensed time-lapse version, which is maybe like anywhere between five to seven minutes if you prefer to watch it at a much faster pace and without these all these cuts and stuff. Um, but if you prefer more of a rambly, longer version, then you can just stick around. Um, so let me get explaining on what we're doing today because as similar to what I did for the coaching piece, I wasn't exactly prepared to paint this per se. So for the coaching piece, I accidentally didn't hit record. So a whole chunk of the piece was just not recording. But for the reason why I didn't show you guys the beginning process of me laying down the initial colors and even just like part of the skin, like the base of it, was actually because I wasn't planning to record this for you guys. I showed in the beginning of the video that I had kind of these sketches in my sketchbook and I feel very unconfident when painting on this paper when I haven't had a sketch that I really liked. So, and sometimes it takes me a while to even like warm up to the sketch or just like get familiar with it and I like the thumbnail that I did in my sketchbook so I kind of just tried my best to replicate the thumbnail onto this sheet of paper or like this block pad. I'm using the Paul Rubens um, hot press paper and it's on like a block of paper, I guess. So it's like gummed on all four sides except for I think the inside side of the paper. There's like a middle portion that's just, it's like two inches of non-gummed paper. So you can stick a X-Acto knife, a palette knife, anything like inside and like slit across the paper so you can free the paper from the block and you can potentially use the other side of the paper or just you know use it as, as kind of like a standalone i just like using the block recently because i wanted to play around with kind of bigger washes to get kind of more softer blends for the paint so like i was mentioning at the beginning that i didn't show the beginning portion of me laying down the first initial washes and the skin i guess um so it was kind of more of a spur of the moment i've been watching a lot of watercoloring videos because they've been recommended to me on my youtube um, homepage and stuff and i just like to watch a bunch of different ones there's a few japanese artists that i really like um, and if i remember to find their usernames because their usernames are in japanese i might not be able to find them um, as quickly or i might not be able to find them at all but hopefully I can find them. I'll just take it through my history and leave them in the description so you guys can check them out too. I think a lot of them have beautiful ways of applying their paints or using a lot of wet on wet technique. Um, there's one specific artist that I do not remember, but she does like beautiful like scenery along with the figures and the way how she uses the paint to do textures or just like the intensity of it i really enjoyed so i wanted to play around a little bit more with the intensity of the paint um but i'm using my whole bind paints as usual or like majority of my whole bind paints instead of using my liquid watercolors which i usually use if i want to build up a lot of color and have that kind of more permanency versus using these kind of traditional watercolors where a lot of these paints can be scrubbed and picked up the liquid watercolors, which I think are the Dr. P.H. Martin ones. I've used it in previous illustrations, like a lot of my older ones. I used it for my, I think it's my 96 line for 17. I did like a little mini forest chibi series with them that I didn't finish, but I think I had Woozies and Junes. I don't know if I did Wanus for a video, but if I remember, uh, maybe I'll link them or put them in like little eye cards above. Um, but, wow, this is like a long-winded way to say what I'm doing today. So, yeah, I'm painting Ball or Raiden Shogun from Genshin Impact. And I had this image of her looking up beautifully at kind of like just the sky or like cherry blossoms or something. I kind of just wanted to draw her side profile. Now, I don't know why I drew her side profile like this. I usually never simplify the face to look like this for the profile, especially. Um, I don't know. It's like, for me, the profile is especially nice when you can see like the full, um, like the ridges and stuff I really like. 
but I kind of simplified it and I'm not sure if it's because I was following my thumbnail a little bit too closely and I forgot to flesh it out before I actually started to um, realize what I was doing or I actually had the intention to slightly turn her face that so that your nose is kind of like off-centered and you can see more of your cheek so your silhouette of your profile is kind of like more obscured and a little bit more rounded so I don't know what I'm going for I have a lot of gripes with just the general anatomy for this piece but it was still fun to work on and I still like it like for the overall image um but yeah, just for future me, I guess, for me to think about a little bit later. Um, so in terms of technique, I decided to do the background and the skin all in one pass. I decided to take out my hockey brush, which I didn't show in this video. Um, but it's kind of like a big paddle brush with really short um, bristles. Now I used to use a, I think I had a two point, no, I had a three inch one that we used to use to gesso our boards. And we would water it down, gesso our boards a couple of times in between classes or our studio classes and stuff. But I have a small two inch one and I use it for my watercolor painting when I want to do giant washes because I honestly do not have a big enough brush to do so um, to wet the whole paper. And wetting the whole paper for me is usually quite scary. I never like pre-stretch my paper is it stretching i think it's called stretching so it's when you kind of soak your whole paper into water evenly and then you lay it onto some kind of harder surface that won't bend or buckle and then a lot of people use like um i think it's some kind of tape like it's like pre-gummed tape that activates with water you basically sealed off the edges and stuff after you kind of dab off a little bit of the excess of the water there's a bunch of videos on it i'm terrible explaining especially without any visuals so yeah if you're interested in stretching your papers for watercolor highly recommend watching it i think it's very informative and might be something you guys would be interested in if you are interested in watercolor painting and have issues with like buckling um a simpler way is to use a block but even for a block it does buckle a lot so another reason why i didn't film this part, like the first part, was actually because I let my paper dry completely overnight. So if I'm in a rush, um, I know some people use a heat gun. I like to use just a hairdryer because I don't want to buy a whole new product because I haven't been painting recently. So I don't really want to invest in just buying a heat gun, even though I think heat guns are quite inexpensive. But a hairdryer will work as long as your paper is not pooling with water. I usually do it as a final step to hopefully get rid of all the excess moisture but um, this time I decided to naturally let it dry um, just because I had a fear that if I used a hair dryer, dryer that it might have dried unevenly because I'm kind of pushing around the moisture a little bit right so I thought that if I let the paper dry completely for like I don't know seven hours maybe it'll be better results and I think it did and I think it helps that I was on a block. But the difference between using a block and um, pre-stretched paper is that stretched paper that's been soaked, stretched, and then painted on top, it will basically not buckle at all. And it's perfect for people who do like bigger pieces or do bigger washes or just like finer details or just use like heavier washes because you don't have to worry about your paper buckling, getting the weird warping while you're working. So you can always get like a, like a smooth flat surface when painting. And using the block, I think is a good way if you maybe work a little bit smaller and don't have that big of wet washes because it still buckles. But luckily for me, um, after I did the initial wash with my hockey brush, so I basically soaked the entire page, um, added some colors throughout just to get some basic, um, soft colors like in the background and i saw one artist do it for the skin and i wanted to try it out i actually really liked it but i'm not sure i'm gonna do this in the future it was a little bit more pale than what i would want it so i would have probably have to paint over the skin several times anyways and i did kept building up her cheek color and kind of like where the hair comes in contact with the forehead just to get it to be a little bit darker and a little bit deeper but you can see that when I was painting, the paper actually didn't really buckle. So it was kind of like a quick way for me to prime my paper in a way, but also prime the, like my sketch lines. So 
I'm not sure how many people know with this. I'm pretty sure if you work with watercolor, you probably know. So a lot of questions that I get from painting with watercolor is that how do you get your sketch to not kind of like smudge or bleed with your paint? Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit awkward. I usually do my best to do the recording of voiceovers all in one session so that I have memory of what I've already talked about, but my program has crashed twice on me. So I've done this voiceover twice, or at least the second half. Um, so I'm gonna have to break this up as many times as I need. Um, but to get back on topic, so I kind of want to preface this a little bit that I am not a person who actually learned watercolor. I am self-taught. I've done only research on stuff that I was interested in. Um, for watercolors. So if you have any specific questions or curiosities about watercolor, make sure to do your own research um, Because I'm not going to be able to answer all the questions out there um, Like I said, I'm not a professional in watercolor. If anything, I've actually only learned more um, by Instructors and professors in oil painting and acrylics because I've at least done one semester of each um, in my second year because if you take the painting course in second year, you're um, basically forced to do acrylics in the first semester and, and then in the second semester you do oils. Um, but in third year and fourth year, it was kind of like free game. So in third year, I did only acrylics and dabbled into watercolor because watercolor, I knew the process was going to be more up my alley because I, my brain functions in such a way that I work from light to dark, like all the time um, because I have a more steadier background in dry media um so like graphite charcoal conte like all that stuff i have more experience in because i love doing value studies um with dry media but for acrylic and oils oftentimes you're working from dark to light or you're using mid-tones and then pushing um more to get your highlights or pushing stuff back and getting some more darker areas for your shadows but for watercolor you have more or less i guess it's less leeway for adding highlights because you can only really add value to the page unless you're using an opaque medium like gouache or acrylics or some kind of gel pen afterwards to pull out your highlights um, but because i'm working from light to dark with watercolor it's easier for my brain to process how to approach my pieces a little bit more with just a little bit more careful planning so um, before i get too derailed um, and explaining this again uh, to seal off my sketches and how i don't make my sketches basically smudge when i'm adding watercolor because i know some people think that oh, don't use graphite like that because it will smudge when painting or like it's just harder to get like cleaner paintings when it's just graphite. Now, for me, I, I don't do it like some people do. I don't pre-stretch my papers. If I had like loose leaves um, of paper, I don't pre-stretch it. So um, I know some people will do their sketch with graphite and stuff and then you soak it with water and soaking it with water kind of helps well it's part of the process of stretching out your paper but also the water seals your graphite into the paper so then afterwards you don't really have to worry about smudging or um, mixing it with your paint by accident for me i just do my best to be very careful i use my pencil very lightly when applying my lines I do all my rough sketching in a pilot color Eno, which is water soluble. So eventually it will be covered up by water as long as I scrub over it a little bit. Um, but I will do it roughly with that pencil. And then with a new pencil, like my mechanical pencil, which is, I think it's just HB. Um, I will just lightly go over whatever lines I want to and most likely I'm just going over the line just once. I'm not going back and forth and rubbing the lead into the paper because I don't want to cause indentations to the paper if the paper is much softer um, like cotton papers or just any papers that um, really dent easily because of all the fibers are really soft. Um, but also I don't really want to go back and forth and create all that debris and excess graphite that might um, pick up if you start to paint 
Another way is that if you do a pencil sketch and maybe you did press a little bit too hard, you can roll over it with a kneaded eraser or just make sure to bump off all the excess prior to painting. Um, so, I actually don't remember what else I talked about for the last like 10 minutes before my program decided to crash and not save that audio file. Um, yeah, okay, but for this painting, I did end up sealing the lines um, with water because I did end up doing a big, gigantic, normal wash of water. You have to make sure that your brush is quite soft and it's applying kind of more of an even surface. You can do this slowly. I don't remember which YouTuber I watched a while ago. I believe he's a Japanese YouTuber. Um, but he does his washes in such a way that I find it very interesting. So this is not like wet washes in terms of just like transparent water, like clean water. He was doing it with um, like actual paint. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. But he does it in such a way that I think you brush your strokes in different directions. So they kind of never like don't do things like right next to each other, if that makes sense because apparently it buckles it in a weird way, but if you do it in, not like a crisscross, but like in a way that you're not bumping them exactly next to each other, you make it buckle less, I think. I don't know if I'll find be able to find the video, because I don't know if it was like a YouTube short or something, but I found it very interesting. I haven't like tried it out before, but anything that will stop buckling, I think will help. Um... Yeah, I really need to rack my brain around um, what I talked about. Mm. So one thing, did I talk about this? If I did, I apologize to anyone who's gotten this far into the video. Um, I wanted to play around more with wet on wet painting. I tend to draw, like I tend to do a lot of painting that's um, wet on dry. And I think part of it is because I'm very timid when it comes to letting things happen spontaneously the spontaneity kind of scares me a little bit i like having control over things if i can in terms of my art so i don't like things that just happen unexpectedly and it's kind of sad because watercolor is very beautiful when you let it do whatever it does and you can really achieve those looks by if you do wet on wet and you can get a lot of like seamless color transitions if you do wet on wet as well and it's really nice so i'm trying my best to push myself to do more wet on wet i did it with the a lot of the hair portion i tried my best to do that i tend to do it when i push the skin tone into their bangs if they have any or like any hair that frames their face um i did it with the flowers i tried my best to do a little bit more wet on wet with the background but as you can see i was very timid with it um it's very plain very light very airy um because i was scared to add too much color that would bleed in such a weird way um but yeah so i did use a hockey brush to paint over the entirety of the paper with just a clean brush which is with water first and then i took my normal watercolor brush and kind of just dropped in color um, near the areas that I knew would have that color. So a lot of the flower areas had yellow and pink and I had a little bit of blue which kind of got pushed to the edges a little bit more than I expected. Um, but I did that for an indication of a, like the sky and then after that I did a whole wash of just um, very messily still on wet paper. Um, kind of like her skin tone, but it washed out a lot and that was kind of like the initial thing that you saw at the very, like at the very beginning of the video. Um, I, excuse me. Everything was basically washed out. Um, and I let my paper dry completely overnight. Wow. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I decided to let my paper dry out completely overnight. Like I said, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the video, but... I, if I'm super impatient, I would usually use a blow dryer. I Like I said, like some people will use a heat gun, but I do not own one. And if you have a heat, not a heat gun, if you have a hair dryer, you might as well just use it. Um, I decided to use it on the low setting if I ever do use it for watercolor painting. So I don't push around any of the water or the pigments if I have any 
um, pooling of paint or water on my paper. Um, but I decided to let it dry naturally for a couple of hours, like seven-ish hours um, while I sleep. And it dried completely flat. There was no buckling or anything, so that was quite nice. Um, I think I also talked about line work. So I understand that some people really like the line, not the lineless look, I guess doing pencil lines instead of doing inking prior. But a lot of the ones that I've watched, like a lot of the artists that I watch on YouTube tend to do lines prior and I see the benefits of it because being able to I don't know like lay down a bunch of like intense colors without having fear that your lines are gonna fade away I think that's nice um I do have a slight fear that one day I'm gonna do a sketch that I really like or like a drawing that I really like and I didn't ink it and I I'm just gonna paint it with such dark colors that I'm gonna lose my lines and I'm gonna ruin the painting. Um, yeah, but I do think that I need to work on just inking in general. I know a lot of you guys are really kind and say that I'm already pretty good at inking, but I think the style of inking that I really enjoy isn't how I currently ink. And a part of me wants to invest in something similar to a, what is it called? Is it like a G pen? There's something else for it. I don't know what it's called. I used to have one, but I can't find any of the, what is it called? Wow, I'm really blanking. Oh no. It's like, it's like those nibs for your, what is it called? It's like basically like a dip pen, dip pen. I wanna do dip pens, but I am thinking it whether or not I wanna try maybe a glass dip pen so I don't have to invest in buying nibs anymore because I can't find my nib holder anymore. If I can find it, then maybe I'll just buy nibs, but if not, then maybe I'll look into getting one of those glass um, kind of dip pens. I know you have to use a lot of patience with it because you're gonna have to constantly dip it and refill the ink quite a bit but i've seen good results um but it would be nice to get some kind of dip pen or g pen to work with um i don't know anything similar to a pen would be nice but i'm so used to using technical pens that i am just tempted to try something new <laughs> I, I don't know if technical pens are something that i really enjoy a lot of technical pens have like consistent line work, which I'm not fond of, but I know I'm gonna struggle using a dip pen or a brush. I think I've lined with a brush in the past, but my lining skills or just like my hand-eye coordination of being able to keep my hand steady, like anyways, is a little bit shaky nowadays since I haven't done it in a while. So I don't know. A little bit off topic. No, it's not too off topic actually. Uh, I was gonna do a larger painting for ball, so I'm gonna, probably gonna go cut some paper down to the correct size. Oh, 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 oh. Um, so this is, I don't know how many days next, I think it's like three to four days later, I decided to finish up the painting because uh, this week has been super busy for me with this family stuff in general. Um, so yeah, I wasn't able to continue filming, so therefore the lighting has changed to a much cooler setting. I apologize for the lighting change, but I'm just finishing up the line work for the flowers, adding some probably highlights to her hair and her eyes, and I think that's all I add to this piece. But, um, oh, I'm gonna correct her neck eventually too. But like I was talking about before, I want to do another painting where it's kind of more Alphonse Mucha inspired, like my Venti and my Zhongli, but I'm, I have half the mind to redo those two paintings, but I don't know if I want to do it before or after I do Raiden Shogun's, because I don't know. I don't know if it's my approach to it. Maybe I should have used a thinner brush to do the line work, or... I don't know, there's something I really don't like about those two pieces anymore. I know some people really like it. I don't like Zhongli's face. I don't think I like Venti's face and his either. The overall color scheme, I wish could be brighter. And initially I did yellow washes on both of them. 
not sure if I like it anymore. I don't know. I I have more ideas of things I want to paint for the future. I've been planning for a Kokomi piece for a long time, but hmm, <clears throat> how to explain this? It's an underwater piece, but I don't know if I want to paint her with the intention of making it look like she's completely submerged underwater or I don't know how to explain it. Because if I do, I have to take in consideration how the water and surrounding light affects like skin tone, her outfit colors and all that. And I'm scared to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, back to the painting, I am correcting kind of the neck area. Um, and I decided to correct it with gouache and I'm adding some highlights with gouache as well. So I decided to correct her neck because it just looked a little bit weird. Um, so I brought in her collar a little bit, fixed up the little ribbon part, and then I'm just adding some highlights to finish off the painting. I'll get on to the explanation of other paintings, maybe in the next watercoloring video if I end up doing that. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!